Venison steaks are great, and burgers and sausages are too, but today I'm taking one of the less popular cuts and cooking up something truly special. It's a venison birria, aka birria de benau, aka diria, that everyone's gonna love. So let's get started. Let's get to work on the base for the birria, and it starts with a red chili sauce. Now I'm making my own using these dried chili peppers, but if you want to skip this step and make it a little easier on yourself, this canned red chili sauce is a pretty good substitute. But if you're making it from scratch, I'm starting with about 10 guajillo chili peppers, I've got two pasilla chili peppers, and about a dozen chili de arbol. And these are what really packs the heat in the dish, so adjust that up or down depending on how spicy you like your birria. I'm also going to add in a few of these canned chipotle peppers in adobo. So the first thing I'm going to do is open these bigger peppers up and get out the seeds. So I'll start by snipping off the stem end of these, and then I'll just open them up like so. Dump out the seeds and pull out that vein and just brush the seeds away. There, now I've got a nice clean seedless chili pod. Now the pasilla peppers, I just tear them right open. Pull out that big stem and the vein. Then most of those seeds on these guys tend to just fall right out of there. The chili de arbol, I'm not going to bother cutting them open, I'll just knock the stem off. I'll dump out any seeds that come out real loose, but I'm not going to worry about the few seeds that stay inside of there at all. They're not going to hurt. Now I'll take all my cleaned chili pods, put them in. This is just cold water right now. I'm going to add in one. This is a smallish onion. You could just use half of a nice big onion. Now, I'm going to take this to the stovetop. I'm going to bring it just up to a boil. Then I'm going to cover it and turn the heat off and let those soak in there for 20 minutes to rehydrate. I'm using deer neck today. I've got the whole neck here. And this is something that a lot of times is just sent off to the grinder for making burgers or sausages, but it is a really excellent roast and works great in a braise like I'm doing here today. The shanks and some of the other tougher cuts are also really great in birria. So while my chilies are over there rehydrating, it's a good time to just trim this thing up just a little bit. I'm only gonna take off the really heavy silver skin and leave the finer stuff because that's actually going to melt away into the sauce and make it even better. Most of the fat here, I'm just going to leave and that is also going to melt into the sauce and make it more flavorful. So just a light cleanup will work for this. Now, I've got my rehydrated chilies. We'll get these down into the blender. The onions softened up a little bit too. I'll put in a cup of that chili liquid down in there too to help this kind of blend down. Now I'll throw in two or three of those canned chipotles and adobo. Normally I have put in four fresh Roma tomatoes here, but this is really not the time of year to get a decent tomato. So I'm going to use a quarter cup of tomato paste. I've got two teaspoons of ground cumin. I've got a tablespoon of Mexican oregano. Four or five cloves of garlic. Birria is flavored with an assortment of aromatic spices, and a lot of times I'll just put them all in here individually, but today I'm going to use this pre-made pickling spice because it's got all the components I'm looking for, including 
allspice berries, black peppercorns, whole cloves, coriander seed, and bay leaf. You can also buy something called mixed spice in the Hispanic section of your grocery store or at a Latin market, and that's essentially the same as this pickling spice with possible addition of some chili pepper and some annatto for color. So I'm going to throw in one tablespoon of the pickling spice. Oh, I nearly forgot to put in a couple of teaspoons of salt. I've been blending this for a minute or so and it still looks very thick so it's not going to strain very well. So I'm going to add in another cup of water. You could also use more of that chili rehydrating liquid from before. That looks pretty good. Now I'm going to strain this out to remove the pulp and get a nice smooth sauce. This takes a little time. Just gonna work it down through this strainer, the spoon. All right, if you do choose to use that canned red chili sauce, you still wanna blend it with the spices or it's just not gonna be the same. Now that's a beautiful chili sauce. You can use this for all kinds of stuff too. Mmm, perfect. Now let's put the sauce and the meat together and get this beauty of cooking. All right, get my nice neck roast. I'm gonna season that salt. Not too heavily because the braising sauce is gonna be salty. Now, bring in my chili, and I want to coat this thing really well with the chili sauce. I'm just going to get in there with my hands. Just got to be careful what I touch after I do this. <laughs> yeah, work the chili sauce all around there. Oh, yeah. And I'll add a little more of that chili sauce down in the bottom there. Right, make sure I get a lot of liquid all around. All the way under there, of course. Make sure everything's coated up. So I'm going to add in enough beef stock to bring this up to about the halfway point on this roast. go. I'll add in a couple of more bay leaves around there. And normally I would bundle up a fresh bundle of thyme and pop it right on top of here, but it's real close to Thanksgiving and the grocery stores here are actually all out of fresh thyme and I despise dry thyme. Just tastes like mold to me, so just gonna leave it out and this is gonna work out just fine. Now, I could simmer this away on the stove top, but I'm gonna roast this slow in the oven. I've got it preheated to 300 degrees, and I'm gonna kinda foil off the top here, and then cover this up to hold in as much of that liquid as I can. Now what am I going to do for the next five hours?
I tell you, coming home to the smells that are coming out of this right now is just about enough to get you drooling. Now, let's see if I can carefully pull back this foil and see how we're doing after five hours. Watch out for that steam. Real hot. Ooh, boy. Oh, man, that's looking good. All right. Oh, and it is just perfect. So tender. It's just falling off there. Ready to shred. We'll get this cleaned up, and then it's taco time. Now let's see how we did. Now the standard condiments with birria is some chopped onion and cilantro and a nice squirt of fresh lime juice. Oh my. Ooh yeah. Check out that bite. Ho 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 ho! Ooh, ah! That is absolutely fantastic the meat is perfectly tender but that broth that rich broth has so much chili flavor it's not hot but it's got so much chili flavor and those aromatic spices are what really sets birria apart from other kind of red sauce braises it's it's just perfect birria is often served like this like a soup maybe with some tortillas on the side however it also makes what I consider to be one of the kings of tacos. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Check out that bite. <laughs> oh. oh man, oh man. It's actually kind of difficult to put into words how good this is. It's not just that it tastes incredible, but that you've taken something that you might have just thrown into the grind pile and mixed in with your other meats and produced something really special. You know, this dish does take some time and some effort, but so does having a successful hunt. And when you take that same energy and you put it into the food that you cook, I promise you won't be disappointed. Thanks for watching.